Hey you guys, this right here is my Tomes of Terror show where I review books. Okay, <laughs> so this is what happens when I take recommendations from people. Uh, I believe, I think it was during maybe one of our sidetrack shows that I brought up a book that I reviewed a while back, which I liked very much called Tender is the Flesh which is, uh, you know, essentially about a future. It's a fable of a future where uh, humans can't eat animals anymore, so they essentially start breeding a certain type of human to be slaughtered for meat, and it goes, like, way into the slaughtering process. So while I was mentioning that book, somebody in the comments, don't remember who it is, but you know who you are, I'm sure, uh, recommended, hey, if you want a really gross-ass book, or, like, a really disturbing book, why don't you read this one right here? This book is called Cows by uh, Matthew Stucco. Stucco. I'm not really sure how you pronounce his last name, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I noticed that this book was on uh, Kindle Unlimited for free. Like, you could read it for free. And I was like, what the hell? We'll give it a whirl. I like some gross shit. <sighs> okay. Now, <laughs> this was a good book. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is one of those books. This is gotta be i mean if not the most disgusting thing i've ever read it's definitely up there like in the top because i've thought i've i've read some gross shit i'm not generally into like i like extreme fiction but i don't know i i kind of feel like sometimes there's a very fine line with extreme fiction at least for me uh where look are you trying to like say something with all of this uh you know going all of this way like you know breaking all these uh boundaries and stuff like that are you trying to say something with it or are you just trying to like be shocking for attention or be shocking for shocking's sake which that you know what i mean so it's a very very fine line and i think that everybody's line for that will be different i definitely do think this book had something to say and the fact that it was so revolting and was meant to be revolting did actually like sort of like feed into the plot to some extent and like feed into the theme of it. Some people did not think that. If you go to the Goodreads page, uh, actually a lot of the view, uh, a lot of the reviews surprisingly are like really, really good. Uh, but then, you know, there's some that are just like one or two stars that are just like, nope, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, what was the point of this? It was just like filthy and disgusting. Uh, with no purpose. I don't think that it was for no purpose. I have read some stuff before that was just like shocking or gross, like just to be shocking and gross. Like it didn't really mean anything. Um, and I don't think that's the case here. That said, this book is definitely not for everyone. In fact, this book is probably for less than 1% of people. <laughs> I mean, because this shit was nasty. And I don't like, I don't mind, um, for some reason, I'm not bothered by, like, you know, extreme fiction, transgressive fiction, whatever you want to call it. I'm not bothered at all by gore in the sense of, you know, just evisceration. I'm not grossed out by reading about that at all. I'm not generally grossed out by seeing it, like, in movies, uh, if it's fake, obviously. Actually, yeah, I can probably, I can watch real surgeries and stuff like that. But uh, I am grossed out by anything having to do with poop and anything having to do with vomit, and to a lesser extent, stuff having to do with like pee, uh, particularly people eating it. So this book has a lot of that, okay? So know that going in. I mean, that's not the only thing that it has. It has like a lot of gore, slaughterhouse type stuff too, but there's a lot, a lot of uh, shit eating and uh, just grungy, yucky crap in general, uh, bestiality, uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> Baby killing, like, self-abortion. What else is in there? There's just everything, okay? Just everything. All the trigger warnings for everything. Rape, uh, yeah. Everything is in this book. Uh, so, <laughs> please don't say that I didn't warn you, because, yeah, this is gross. And honestly, I had to, like, skim through some of the stuff, because this did, like, make me gag, like, several times. Like I said, mostly the shit-eating, which... I'm too, I, my imagination is too vivid to like read stuff like that because I can just picture it, I could smell it, and I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah, no, okay. I have, I have to like step away from the computer for a minute, like where I was reading it because I was like, I think I might hurl. I didn't hurl when I was reading this. I think some people uh, that 
that I've seen reviews of it said they did actually hurl. And uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on your case about that because I did kind of feel like I was gonna hurl a few times. And uh, so I just kind of I was like, okay, I'm just gonna skim through this section. I I got it. I got the gist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah. So what is this book about? This book actually came out in 1994. I believe it was his first novel. And uh, so it's kind of like, it's pretty well known uh, from what I could determine in the quote unquote transgressive, transgressive uh, fiction, a lot of which I feel like came out in the 1990s. I feel like that was a big like splatterpunk kind of, because I certainly read a lot of it during that uh, time. Uh, although, like I said, I kind of prefer the more gory shit as opposed to like the poop and vomit stuff like it's you know what i mean it's just i don't know it just really gets to me more than gore does you can do all kind of shit with gore and it doesn't bother me at all but the minute you start like eating poop yep i'm i'm kind of out so i'm just warning you right here there's a really really lot of shit eating and just just disgusting i mean okay i'll get into it so uh <laughs> so here's what the book is about because it is it does actually have a story it is about something it's not just a a cavalcade of revolting images, although it is that. Uh, but I will say that as gross as it was, I feel like it gets a little bit less gross as it goes on. I don't know if that's because I was just getting desensitized to it, which that might be the case. Or if, you know, he just kind of like wanted to start out with all, like all this fucking filth at first and then to kind of, I don't know, weed out people that were gonna then kind of get to the story later. Like I said, it's gross all the way through, but I feel like it got less gross as it went on, maybe. I don't know, but it's hard for me to say. It's, maybe that's subjective. So this, uh, this is a book, he's a British author, I believe. So the main character of this is a 25-year-old young man named Stephen. He lives in an apartment with his mother. Uh, the mother is never named. She is just called the Hag Beast. Now, this woman has, uh, you presume, been emotionally and probably physically abusing uh, this young man for his entire life. She is a hugely fat woman who apparently never showers, never cleans anything, never anything. I mean, she, this is, okay, so this is like pretty gross, but she does like just walk around in this disgusting uh, like house dress or something like that that has like menstrual blood like crusted on the back of it She's just like, you know what I mean? And he's like always talking about how like just she has various crusts on her. We'll say that uh, so she one of her big things too is that she feeds him Just the most disgusting food like she will just like slop like <laughs> Livers or tripe or something like that like onto a plate like rare rare like raw and like just make him eat it it's almost kind of like this weird battle of wills and uh he hates her obviously um but he i guess they so they have like this really fucked up relationship they just live in this filthy hole of an apartment he also his only friend really is his dog who's named dog uh and this is like really oh there's cruelty to animals in this too by the way uh so just in case i didn't mention that because i did give all the trigger warnings any anything you can think of is in here pretty much so that's a, so i don't know like i'll get into some specific stuff but pretty much anything you can think of hey is this in here yes it is so dog uh is like probably the saddest character because at some point the hag beast the mom uh she hates the dog obviously because she's the worst and she threw a brick at the dog and like crippled its back legs so now it can only like walk around like with its little back legs uh kind of trailing along behind it so uh, Stephen has never had a job prior to now. Uh, he basically spends his days in this filthy ass apartment with his disgusting mother watching TV. And his big dream is he wants to live like everyone else in this, like, or at least the families that he sees on TV. So he wants the whole idealized fantasy of, you know, I want a wife who loves me and cooks for me and I come home from work every day and she kisses me and we have a dog and children and white picket fence. He wants all of that type of stuff, um, but doesn't really know how to go about getting it because he is not like other people. And his mom like tells him that kind of stuff too. Those people, they're not like us and all this other stuff. So he doesn't really know how to go about it. He has another sort of friend. Uh, there's this girl named Lucy and she lives in an apartment like upstairs. Lucy's thing, she's kind of a tragic character as well. Lucy believes that everything, like every bad thing 
um, in the world, or like evil essentially, is in physical form, like inside of people's bodies, like in these, she kind of describes it like little black rocks or something like that. So she has made it her life's work to basically like cut open or vivisect animals looking for these, you know, rocks like of evil, essentially. And she also like likes to go inside her own body too. So there's like a really gross scene where her and Steven are having sex and she has like a rectal probe, like upper body. It's like, yeah, so it, it's a thing. It's a whole thing. So there's that. I don't want to get too much into it because I'm sure this video is going to get demonetized. <laughs> but because it's like, so I don't want to like explain it too much, but I mean, it is going to come out. So yeah. So she's like kind of obsessed with that. And because she's the uh, essentially the only girl that Steven knows, um, he's got it in his mind. Well, he's going to marry her and we're going to have children and everything's going to be beautiful and happy and everything like that. So he ends up getting a job at a slaughterhouse, of course, and uh, he's a, he's originally put like at the end of the line. Now the guy that runs the slaughterhouse is named Cripps, and he is just this depraved. His whole thing is you can't be a man until you've learned like just to kill with impunity, whether it's cows or people or whatever. So at this slaughterhouse, he um pretty much he will just like rape all the people that work there and like nobody seems all that upset about it like while somebody's working at the machine he'll just come up and like you know fucking anally rape them and you know everyone's just kind of like okay with it uh also he has these things where like at sometimes after at the end of the day like some of the other workers will come there and they will bring in a cow like into the on the killing floor and they will like shoot it through full of holes and then all of them will like rape the holes and then like one guy like likes to have the cow shit on him like he gets off on that so it's a whole thing like i said so there's cow rape there's all kind of crazy shit so uh at some point steven sort of even though this kind of like grosses him out but he's also kind of like well maybe crips is right like maybe i do have to like kill like man up to get what i want so he starts to think well i need to kill my mother uh, so that, you know, I can have the life that I want. So he initially tries to start doing it subtly uh, by poisoning her by essentially shitting on a plate and making her eat it or like asking her to eat it. Now, again, because there's this weird relationship between the two of them, she knows what he's trying to do. So she's just like, well, I'm just going to eat it then. So then they're both like eat it. So that sequence is like really even like just thinking about it, like talking about it um, is making me kind of nauseated. <laughs> so let's move on. Uh, but yeah, so after a while, he kind of realizes that, well, she's on to me. It's not working fast enough. Like she's not getting sick enough. So he decides he's going to have to take a more direct route. Uh, so he ends up doing that. So he does actually end up killing his mom and uh, getting Lucy to move into the apartment with him. And they actually, for a little while, they actually do clean up the apartment. Uh, he has the job at the, um, at the uh, slaughterhouse still, but I think like for a while, like he doesn't go back. So it looks as though Cripps, the guy at the um, slaughterhouse was right. He's like, oh, well, I'm a man now. Like I killed, uh, I killed my mother. I got her out of the way. And now I have like this idyllic life because now they have this apartment. Now he has a wife, uh, his wife gets pregnant. And, uh, you know, and so there's, well, they don't get married, but you know what I mean? Uh, and then he's like, so we're going to have this perfect life, just like the people on TV, even though obviously he is very damaged. Lucy is very damaged. Um, and you know, it's not going to end well. Now into this, there is also an element of, cause I haven't got into this yet uh, about the cows into this comes an element of magical realism because while he is at the slaughterhouse, he gets, uh, kind of he hears like a voice like talking to him from like underneath like this uh what a drain or something like that and down there there is a cow a guernsey and it can talk and he basically says hey we're like a group of cows that escaped from this slaughterhouse and we are witness we witnessed like all of the cruelties that crips um you know kind of inflicted on our people you know what i mean on the other cows and we want to kill him and we want you to help us. So, uh, so Stephen then gets sort of, uh, you know, he kind of goes and hangs out like with these cows and they live like underneath the 
street, like in the sewers and stuff. And there's like a herd of them that live down there. And him and the Guernsey kind of like uh, plot to like kill Crips. And then he, then Steven kind of gets into this thing too, where it's almost kind of like the cows are better than the humans, but then like they're also kind of like savage and degenerating just like the humans are. And then there's like this power struggle between Steven, the human and the cow, the Guernsey, who you know, the Guernsey says, you know, the cows, we should live free down here and we should uh, brutalize humans the way they've brutalized us all this time. And, uh, you know, and so Stephen kind of wants to take over like the cow herd. Uh, but then the Guernsey was like, well, no, you're a human. You, this isn't your place and stuff like that. So there's kind of like a weird like power struggle going on down there with the cows as well. So as I mentioned, uh, so there is kind of like, there is an underlying point or there is an underlying theme to the story uh, in the sense of, you know, what I took from it at least was to what extent does violence or power, is, is it predicated on uh, brutalizing others? Um, so there is like a lot of that going on in there. So, so I do think there's a point to all the filth and disgustingness. I'm not sure if there was a point to all the shit eating other than just making it as depraved as possible. And also I think that sort of made it that Steven, the character, he had lived like that for so long that was there really any, like he was probably so damaged by all of that. Like, was there any way for him ever to have a normal life? So I, in a way I found this a kind of sad and it's also kind of like, it's kind of funny too, but like in that weird, like blackly humorous, like dry British way. But so I don't know, cause it, the humor is like very, very subtle. And I think like a lot of Americans, if they read it, wouldn't really necessarily think it was funny, but I don't know. I kind of, I think I have more of like an appreciation for like that kind of dry British humor. So to me, it's not laugh out loud funny, but it was kind of like droll funny, if you want to like say it like that. But as I said, I also kind of found it like a really tragic story because of the way that this young man has been brought up. You know, he really doesn't have a chance of having like a regular life just because of all this, like his life is just essentially one big long catalog of filth and depravity and would there be any way to get out of that and it's kind of sad too because he so he's also very vulnerable and he's open to like all these people like crips who are basically like well you just have to like learn to kill with impunity because he does end up killing you know not only cows but he ends up killing people as well um you know to get power uh and you know so he's vulnerable to falling into that kind of trap of you know making him seem like he has to brutalize others the way he's been brutalized so i think that's why that's how his story like mirrors that of the cows uh so it's kind of like give me a little bit of an animal farm vibe too i guess because of the talking cows and stuff so and i'm pretty sure that was deliberate but yeah so as i mentioned if you are at all squeamish about anything please please do not read this uh i can't like recommend it to anybody just like across the board obviously um but if you're into kind of more extreme fiction transgressive transgressive fiction and you don't mind uh just a pretty much constant i mean it's not a long book it's probably only about 200 pages but it's just like a constant disgusting, just every, like, like I said, everything is in this. There's not only shit eating, there's just vomiting, there's crusts of various kinds, there's weird sexual shit, there's bestiality, there's self-abortion, there's like knifing, like nailing babies to walls, shit like that. So this has everything in it. And I would totally understand if you didn't want to read it. And honestly, um, I'm not going to say I wish I didn't read it. I'm actually glad I did read it, um, but I will say that it is probably the most disgusting thing that I've ever read. Interestingly, I was watching, I found this new uh, book reviewing channel the other day, and he did a series, I can't remember what his name is, but um, he did a series of the most disturbing books that he'd ever read, which not ne is not necessarily like disgusting, but so he'd done like a, a long-term series of that, but he did do, and I watched a video that he did earlier today, um, of the most disgusting books, as in viscerally disgusting, like this. And I was very interested, he did like a top 10. This wasn't even in the top 10. It was in like the, the honorable mentions. <laughs> so, 
So this isn't the most disgusting book ever written by a long shot. I've read a couple grosser things than this, but I will say that this was easily, easily one of the grossest things that I've ever read. I mean, really, really gross. So if that sounds like a fun time to you, then uh, by all means, pick it up and uh, give it a read. It is kind of like, a, like I said, sort of a minor classic in the, uh, in the realms of extreme fiction. Uh, so if you feel like you have to read it, just know going in that... Yeah, it's 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 rough. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty rough, and uh, that's that's a lot coming from me because I can I can deal with a lot, but this this one I was kind of a couple times I was like, ah, oh, huh. you know what I mean? I was just like, man, I just I don't know if I can finish this, but I did want to finish it because I did I wanted to see where it was going, especially once the talking cows were in introduced. I was kind of like, oh, okay, this is now I'm intrigued. Uh, let's see what's going on with that. So. I was compelled to like finish it. I never wanted to like just be like, fuck no, I don't want to. I did kind of think about it vaguely like toward the beginning because I'm like, oh my God, is this like all leading up to something? It's like, I think I'm going to barf. But like I said, once the cow, once the talking cows got introduced, I kind of got more interested in it. But, uh, but yeah, so if you want to read it, um, you know, obviously you can order the paperback or if you have Kindle Unlimited like I do, uh, you can read it on there for free or at least you could as, as of this recording. So if you've read it, and I know one of you has because one of you recommended it, so thanks, I guess. I'm not really sure. It was a good book, but but yeah, it's pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, so if you've read it, let me know what you think about it in the comments, what you think about this type of extreme fiction in general. Like I said, I don't mind it, um, but there's a fine line between, you know, I'm being like disgusting, like to make a point or I'm just being disgusting because I'm an edgelord and I want to make everybody uncomfortable um, for, for attention or whatever. Uh, so, you know, kind of let me know where you fall on that spectrum because that's something that I'm actually kind of interested in. Uh, so yeah, that will do it for this Tomes of Terror and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.